Welcome to episode 227 of Build Your House or Self University by Hi You. I'm your host and fellow student, Michelle Nelson, and together we'll learn the basics of home design and construction and demystify the building process. So we will spend our money wisely and build quality dream homes with or without a general contractor. This week's episode is part two of a show I started a couple of weeks ago. If you haven't listened to part one, You might want to do that now because we'll have some quiz questions in this episode that will cover information from the current and previous lesson. As I told you last time, I recently selected the plumbing fixtures for my project and was surprised about how much there is to consider when choosing toilets. And this week's mini lesson will cover one piece versus two piece toilets, toilet height, floor mount versus wall mount toilets and some options that you can look for that will help keep your toilets cleaner for longer. Before we get into the content, I want to say muchas gracias to Rodrigo, 1984-1986. Thank you for our latest Apple Podcasts review. He gave me my very first review in Spanish. Now, unfortunately, I never took Spanish, but I studied French and Latin. So I could pretty easily figure out what Rodrigo was saying. Now, as you heard, I sound pretty terrible speaking Spanish. So I'll let Google Translate say what he wrote for me. Muchas gracias por la programa. Which translates to thank you very much for the program. Thank you, Rodrigo. Thank you for giving us a shout out in Spanish. I love that. Google Translate is actually a good tool to use on a construction site if you have non-English speaking workers. Most of my framing crew speaks Spanish exclusively, and I've used sites like Google Translate to help me communicate with them. Google Translate can help you translate not only Spanish, but most other languages too. You can either type or speak a sentence or word into the translator and the site will either speak or write out the translation. It's been super helpful. Okay, let's get into the content. We'll begin with a continuation of the discussion about toilet seats. Specifically, let's go over the two most common materials you'll need to make a choice about, plastic versus wood. If you're over 35, you probably remember heavier, more substantial toilet seats than the ones that are commonly used today. Most toilet seats on the market today are made of plastic. Most old school toilet seats are made of wood, compression molded wood. You can still get wood toilets, but don't worry, they don't look like stained brown wood. They instead have smooth molded surfaces and are usually painted white or some other light color, so they look like conventional toilet seats. If you like a weightier toilet seat, though, you might consider a wood seat. Wood seats are warmer, heavier, and have a higher weight tolerance. The downsides are that wood seats are less hygienic since wood is porous. And surprisingly, wood seats are less durable than plastic seats are. Plastic toilet seats are lighter weight, but more durable. Plus, they're more scratch resistant and more hygienic. And you'll probably find many more plastic options on the market. A few more things about toilet seats. Consider extra features like grip-tight bumpers and soft-close seats. Grip-tight bumpers hold seats firmly in place and resist shifting. In my current house, we have a toilet seat without grip-tight technology, and the seat sometimes shifts when I'm sitting on it. That can feel unstable and unclean, since that means that my thighs sometimes touch the toilet rim below the seat. Oof, that's icky. The soft close option, also called quiet close, is helpful if you want to avoid the noise and safety hazards of a slamming toilet seat. Slamming toilet seats are especially hazardous to a small child's hands. Another decision you'll have to make about the toilets you'll choose is whether to go with a two-piece or one-piece toilet. A two-piece toilet is what most of us are used to. It's manufactured with the bowl and tank as separate pieces that are joined together during installation. One-piece toilets are the newer option on the market. A one-piece toilet 
is a toilet that's manufactured with the bowl and tank molded together as one piece. That crevice between the upper tank portion of the toilet and the lower seat and bowl portion of the toilet is absent in a one-piece toilet. I'm talking about that slot-like area behind the toilet seat. With a one-piece unit, there is a smooth surface where the tank and the bowl connect, unless there's no tank at all. A few one-piece toilets don't even have a water tank. The bowl receives water at a very high pressure straight from the pipes, but most one-piece toilets have a tank and they look very similar to two-piece units, except that the connection between the tank and the bowl is smooth. One-piece toilets take up less space. They look sleeker and they're easier to clean and install. Cleaning is easier because you won't have that crevice between the tank and the bowl where dirt and splatters can hide. There are also potentially fewer leaks and lower repair costs with a one-piece toilet because there are fewer connections and moving parts that could break. The disadvantages of one-piece toilets are that they are typically more expensive and heavier than their two-piece counterparts. Generally speaking, both one-piece and two-piece toilets on the market today are equal as far as water efficiency and flushing power. So you'll be happy with the performance of either. Once again, choosing one over the other is a matter of personal preference. Now, speaking of toilet performance and flushing power, here's a pop quiz. Do you remember the name of the website that independently tests and ranks the flushing power of the majority of toilet brands and models on the market? We talked about that site in part one of the lesson in episode 226. That website that tests the flushing performance of toilets is map-testing.com. The MA in MAP stands for maximum and the P stands for performance. Map-testing.com recommends toilets with flush scores greater than 350 and toilets with scores of 600 or greater are highly recommended. Okay, moving on to another feature you might want to look for, water sense. The water sense label is used on toilets that are independently certified to meet rigorous criteria for both performance and water use efficiency. Only water-saving toilets that complete the certification process can earn the water sense label. So, that water sense seal not only means you're looking at a water-saving toilet, but one that's been independently tested to work efficiently and according to the EPA standards. EPA is the Environmental Protection Agency. In other words, selecting a water sense toilet gives you greater assurance that you're selecting a high-performance, water-efficient toilet. According to the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency, quote, toilets are by far the main source of water use in the home, accounting for nearly 30% of an average home's indoor water consumption, end quote. They say older, inefficient toilets, which use as much as six gallons per flush, are a major source of wasted water in many homes. As compared to older, inefficient toilets, water sense toilets allow the average family to save nearly 13,000 gallons of water every year. That translates to about $140 per year in water costs. And that is $2,900 over the lifetime of the toilet. Most quality brands carry water sense toilets. Next on our list is a comfort feature, toilet height. Traditional toilet seats sit 15 inches from the floor. Comfort height toilet seats sit a few inches taller, with seats anywhere from 17 to 19 inches from the floor. Comfort height toilets are also called chair height, easy height, right height, smart height, and ADA height. ADA stands for Americans with Disabilities Act. The added height of comfort height toilets makes getting on and off the toilet easier for many people, especially those who are taller, aging, disabled, or people with knee or back pain. But even able-bodied, 
Average height younger adults often like comfort height toilets more than standard toilets. Keep in mind, though, that comfort height toilets aren't more comfortable for everyone. Comfort height models can be difficult to maneuver for shorter people, particularly kids. And they can be challenging, especially for little boys who have not quite mastered their aim. In addition, it's been said that a lower toilet is best at creating the squatting position our bodies prefer when having a bowel movement. Another issue is that seats that are too high can cut off circulation if your feet don't touch the ground. Before selecting a toilet, think about which bathroom the toilet is for and who will be using it most. It's a good idea for you and members of your household to sit on the models you're considering before making a final selection to make sure they suit you. Next on the list is floor mount versus wall mount. Floor mounted toilets are by far more common. As the name implies, they're installed on the bathroom floor, so they actually touch the floor. A wall mounted toilet, also known as a wall hung toilet, is mounted on the bathroom wall. Wall mounted units don't touch the floor, and only the bowl that you sit on is visible. The toilet tank is concealed inside the bathroom wall. Wall hung toilets are more popular in Europe than they are here in the U.S. Wall mounted toilets are space savers. They're stylish and contemporary looking, and they can be installed as high or as low as you want. It's easy to clean them and the area around them. They're ideal for small bathrooms because they occupy zero floor space, and they can make the room look more spacious overall. The cons of a wall hung toilet are that the installation can be difficult. The units themselves and the installation costs are more expensive, and repair costs are higher when compared to floor mounted toilets. A wall mounted toilet should be hung with special mounts on a reinforced wall. If not, the toilet can end up loosening or pulling out completely from the wall over time just by using it. Comparatively, standard floor mount toilets are typically cheaper, easier to install, but they take up more space and they're harder to clean and clean around. Okay, speaking of cleaning the toilet, here are some other easy clean options you might want to consider. Toilets with skirted trapways, easy clean coatings, and cleaning flush technologies. A skirted trapway, sometimes called a concealed trapway, won't make your toilet function any better or worse. It's basically a smooth, fairly straight toilet base that skirts or conceals the outline of the curving channel inside the base of the toilet. Take a look at the show notes if you're not sure what I'm talking about. A skirted or concealed trapway is easy to clean and prettier to look at. Prices and installation costs can be higher for a skirted toilet base, but the look and ease of cleaning make it worth the upcharge for many homeowners. Another easy clean option is a specialized easy clean toilet bowl coating. If you want to decrease the number of stains from waste and water scale that appear inside the toilet bowl, look for a coating on the bowl surface that makes the bowl slick and inhibits bacteria, water scale, and stains. This keeps the bowl cleaner for longer. Look for terms like clean coat, ever clean, and easy clean. There are also flushing technologies that generate a forceful swirling motion around the inside edge of the bowl to help clean the bowl with every flush. Some toilets even have reservoirs where you can add a cleaning tablet or a cleaning solution that's released a little bit at a time with every flush. Another extra to look for is insulated tanks. Select insulated tanks if you're worried about a sweating toilet. Insulation minimizes condensation on the tank that can develop if the toilet is exposed to high humidity. With less sweating, you'll need to wipe down the tank less often. But if you have a good exhaust fan in your bathroom that removes humidity, you're less likely to need an insulated tank. Take a listen to episode 62 to learn more about exhaust fans. Before we go to our quiz, I want to say a quick word about the style and color of your toilets. Toilets with straighter, sleeker lines and surfaces, 
and more squared off edges are more contemporary. More curves, grooves, and more ornate surfaces make a toilet look more traditional. And do you remember from last episode whether a rounded or elongated toilet seat is more traditional? Which one is more traditional, rounded or elongated? The answer is a rounded seat is more traditional. Now, as far as color goes, you'll never go wrong with white. It's a classic color that's current and will never go out of style. Other colors for toilets on the market today are mostly lighter grays, creams, tans, and taupes, but you'll also find bolder colors like black. If you want a colored toilet, that's okay, but realize your toilet might look dated sooner rather than later if you go with anything other than white. All right, let's end with a quiz. Question number one, true or false? Bidet toilet seats have a smaller opening than most standard toilet seats. This is information from part one of this lesson. Is that true or false? That's true. Bidet toilet seats have technologies integrated into the seat itself, and that takes up some space. That makes the seat a little bit larger, but the opening a little bit smaller when compared to standard toilet seats. Question number two, which feature or toilet is not necessarily easier to clean? A, a skirted or concealed trapway. B, a wall mount toilet. C, comfort height toilets. D, a slick bowl coating. Or E, one piece units. The answer is C. Comfort height toilets are more comfortable for many people but are not necessarily easier to clean. Comfort height toilets are 17 to 19 inches from the floor, and they make getting on and off the toilet easier for many people, especially for those who are average height or taller, those who are aging, disabled, and people with knee or back pain. All of the other features I named make cleaning the toilet and the area around the toilet easier. Well, that's it for this week. I hope you learned as much as I did, and I hope you'll join me again next time for another episode of Build Your House Yourself University. Bye, hi, you. Please remember that the purpose of this podcast is simply to educate and inform. It's not a substitute for professional advice. The information that you hear is based only on the opinions, research, and experiences of my guests and myself. That information might be incomplete, it's subject to change, and it may not apply to your project. In addition, building codes and requirements vary from region to region, so always consult a professional about specific recommendations for your home.